Ready? Yeah. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> Ooh, she's sassy today, <laughs> friends. Okie dokie, we're gonna do it. Welcome back to Every Disney Movie Ever. My name is Justin. I'm watching Every Disney Movie Ever. This is the Rewatch series. And today we are going to talk about the Sword in the Stone. I have Erin. Woo! She was in the original Sword in the Stone video. So I thought it most appropriate to bring her into the Rewatch. The only way it could happen. Of course. <laughs> As I have done now in the past, she will not be here for the entire length of the video because making my guests say all that stuff is no, really... Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't sign up for that. They just signed up to watch a fun Disney movie. So I will be discussing all of the technical stuff by myself, and then we will bring Aaron back in the end. So bye. Bye. The Sword in the Stone is a 1963 animated theatrical release, and everyone that worked on it, I've already covered it in a previous video. They will be listed and linked in the description. The Sword in the Stone is based off a book of the same name by T.H. White, released in 1938. It was originally a standalone book, but then in the 1950s became part of a series called The Once and Future King. It is the first novel in that series. Shall we compare? Wart needs to start his education, and while on a hunting trip, he meets Merlin, a wizard who lives backward in time so he knows the future. Merlin becomes Wart's teacher, and Kay, Wart's older brother, gets jealous of Wart's fortune. Merlin's lessons often turn Wart into animals, the first being a perch where he learns the lesson of power. Wart also becomes a hawk, an ant, an owl, a goose, and a badger, all teaching him a different lesson or way of life. Wart feels bad for Kay, so Merlin suggests a path in the forest that they are sure to find adventure. Kay and Wart meet Robinwood, who informs them that an old fairy has taken Friar Tuck. The the boys help Robinwood save Friar Tuck, and Kay slays a griffin. King Uther Pendragon sends word that Sir Tweety will be using their home as lodging as he hunts in the forest by them. Tweety's hound is paralyzed, and Robinwood puts it out of its misery. King Pelinor resumes his chase of the questing beast. Six years pass, and Kay prepares for his knighthood as Wart continues his education. King Uther has died without an heir and places a sword and an anvil in a stone, and the only one worthy enough to be king can pull it from the stone. A tournament is announced to give all the nobles the chance to pull the sword from the stone. Merlin finishes tutoring Wart, but insists they will see each other again. Kay realizes he forgot his sword and sends Wart to go get it. The inn is closed, so Wart starts searching for a replacement. He pulls the sword from the stone and returns to Kay. Kay lies to Sir Ector and claims he pulled it from the stone. Back at the stone, Kay reveals his falsehood and Sir Ector bows down before Wart, claiming him as king. Wart bursts into tears out of confusion. Merlin returns and tells Wart he is Uther's son and it will be his glorious doom to take up the burden of his nobility. Wart accepts his role as King Arthur. The end. I'd say they have some differences, but for the most part, the movie got the core of the stories. It the movie really focuses on the lessons as the animals because that's like the fun part for Disney but it does really hit the major points of T.H. White's story. The film stars Ricky Sorensen, Richard Reitherman, Robert Reitherman, Carl Swenson, Junius Matthew, Sebastian Cabot, Norman Alden, and Martha Wentworth. Ricky Sorensen plays Wart and is best known for Man of a Thousand Faces, Father of the Bride, Airport 77, and this. Richard and Robert Reitherman both also played Wart, and this is their only credit. Carl Swenson plays Merlin, and he's best known for The Birds, Hour of the Gun, Judgment at Nuremberg, and this. Junius Matthews plays Archimedes, and Sebastian Cabot plays the narrator and Sir Ector. Both of them, I covered in the video about the many adventures of Winnie the Pooh, the link will be in the description. Norman Alden plays Sir Kay and he's best known for Back to the Future, Ed Wood, The Transformers, The Movie, and this. Martha Wentworth plays Madame Mim and the Old Lady Squirrel and she is best known for The Stranger, Rustlers of Devil's Canyon, 101 Dalmatians, and this. Walt obtained the rights in 1939 and the storyboarding process began in 1949. After 101 Dalmatians wrapped, both Sword in the Stone and Chanticleer were in pre-production. A lot of people had issue with Chanticleer because it was about a chicken, apparently and many people thought you couldn't relate to a chicken in any way, but Ken Anderson, Mark Davis, and Milk Call had put almost everything of themselves into Chanticleer, but then Walt approved Sword in the Stone after he saw a production of Camelot, and everyone was furious except Bill Pete, who had been working on Sword in the Stone, and Milt approached Bill and claimed, you know, why are you doing this to us? We tried so hard, and Bill was like, I'm not trying to compete. I was just writing Sword in the Stone, and Walt liked it, and it caused a big riff, but Sword in the Stone got approved and Chanticleer obviously didn't and never did because I've never heard of Chanticleer. We'll have to research, we'll have to understand what that is. Bill wrote the film, Walt approved it. Carl Swenson, who plays Merlin, was originally supposed to be Archimedes, but then was moved to be Merlin because they had auditioned like 700 people for Merlin and could not find the right voice. And 
as I'm sure you've been asking since I listed who was in the film, Ricky Sorensen hit puberty while he was recording the dialogue for Wart, so that forced Wolfgang Reitherman to bring his sons Richard and Robert in to also do voice for Wart, so Wart has three different voices throughout the film, which I had never noticed. I don't know how I didn't notice it, because now that I know, I can tell. Not a lot of the time, because a lot of the time it was probably a little bit scene by scene, but there are some scenes where all three voices are in the same scene, and it's a little distracting, I will be honest. The last scene in particular, when Wart is trying to get out of being king and he's trying to leave, the voices are very different. He has a very deep voice by the door, and then when he's calling out for Merlin, he's got a very young voice. So it's actually really distracting. This is the first Disney animated feature to have music by the Sherman Brothers. The film made $4.75 million off a $3 million budget, which is good. It was a box office success, but it received really mixed reviews. People thought the story was lacking or people thought it wasn't their best attempt. It has a 65% on Rotten Tomatoes. The only special features of any worth were two deleted songs actually talked about and walked through by the Sherman Brothers, which was very cool. They took us through them. The first was the Blue Oak Tree, which it was sung by the knights of the castle and it was supposed to show how dumb they were. And the second song was the magic key and it was about how a noggin full of knowledge is the magic key to life. It was nominated for best score but lost. It was the last animated feature Walt was alive for and it's apparently getting a live action adaptation released on Disney Plus potentially later this year. <laughs> She's back. <laughs> Poof, just like Merlin. <laughs> in our original video, link in the description, we discussed how it was a very similar animation style to 101 and the Aristocats, um, the women, the squirrels, <laughs> the animal women versus the real women. There's like one real woman. Two if you Well, Madame Mim. Madame Mim. I was thinking of the woman at the castle yeah. and I forgot about Madame Mim. And there's two different and versions of the Madame Mim. Yeah, and then there's the squirrel. The squirrel. The, the two squirrel women. Not a lot of women in the film. We had also discussed Merlin being a huge hypocrite. Which he is. We'll yes. get there. Uh, we kind of joked around about the plot. We made fun about a torch being lit in the downright pouring rain. It was a good time. Definitely check yeah. it out. The link is in the description. But now, we're going to talk about it again. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed the voices too. The high yeah. to the lows. The raspy to the... I don't even know, yeah. like, different changes in those. Um, I did, for some reason I didn't, I don't think we talked about man and men being two different versions of woman, women. Oh, being ugly and, and beautiful? And what they considered beautiful. Yeah. And that was interesting because it made me think of, like, it was definitely, like, Disney version of Bond Lady. Yeah, well... So in the film, a lot of you may know that Madame Mim makes herself uglier by giving herself a pig face yeah. and then makes herself beautiful by becoming this tall, stick, thin, but big boobs and big yeah. butt with really long hair woman. She's got a really pointy nose, which I yeah. don't think is conventionally no. yeah. what is considered beautiful, but you know, it's supposed to be, she's like, I can be beautiful. And yeah. like, even Wart's like, what? <laughs> yeah. And uh, that is really interesting. Yeah. Because you know. And then, well, we talked about the disease. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you tell that. You looked it up and everything. So, I forget what it's called. Like, malignant... Pentrotosis or something? something like that. It's really long. So, I looked it up. It is a pretend disease, but it was um, meant to mimic the measles because during like 56 to 63 or something like that there were like 542,000 cases of measles and every hundred every 1,000 was a one, at least one death yeah so there's one time. per 1,000 yep so yeah that's interesting vaccinate your kids <laughs> I think the animal parts are the weakest part of the parts of the film I don't think they're the funniest a lot of people think they're the funniest parts of the movie but I just think they're kind of boring. Like, when he's a fish, I'm like, okay, we get it. <laughs> and then, I mean, the bird gets a little bit more interesting because Madame Mim comes yeah. into play when he's the bird. But otherwise, then the squirrels, we know how I feel about the squirrel scene at this point. <laughs> I feel bad for those women squirrels. I do not feel bad for Merlin, even a little. <laughs> um, 
And every time I watch the movie, I think I just start to hate Merlin. <laughs> More well, and, and you, more. you said today, like, the, what was it, like, oh, if you're persistent, that will be... Oh, yeah, Merlin, like, all the lessons he's teaching Wart, it's like, some of them are important. He's trying to be like, you know, use your brain, use your yeah. brain to get out of a problem. But then there's other things where he's like, oh, um, you know, if the woman persists enough, <laughs> now you're together. <laughs> so the same vice versa. Yeah. You persisted enough, now you're together. And I'm like, that's that's not a good idea. Yeah. No means no. And that's that's the lesson. Wart doesn't like hasn't learned yet that he can aspire to be more than a squire, but uh -huh. he's very excited to be a squire. And then Merlin's like, Oh, you just wanna be a squire? And like squashes all of Wart's dreams, yeah. basically. And Wart's just like I thought I did good. Yeah. Which was really sad. Mm -hmm. So Merlin's Kind of a turd blossom. <laughs> oh, the drowning. The drowning. That's Him what it was. Drowning. Like yeah. in the fishing scene, he goes to save Wart and he, he like, should definitely drown. He's like chucking in the water. Like, why is he not drowning? And he can fly immediately coming out of the water. It's like, no way, dude. He's sopping wet. Well, and then also Merlin and chucking his own responsibility. He's your pupil now. Yeah. Also, just Merlin constantly being like, it's nature, it's your problem, my guy. Magic can't solve this problem. Yes, it can. Turn him back into a human and the problem is solved. Like, Why didn't he make the tower not be Unending stupid. questions. Why didn't Merlin fix the tower? Totally in his power. He made all his dishes start an assembly line. He shrunk all his crap into his bag. Right? We don't like Merlin here in this household. <laughs> I think it's what we're learning. I like Merlin in general, just yeah. not some of his messages. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I don't understand how he lives backwards in time. I don't think he does in the movie. Not in the movie, but... In the book, in he lives his... backwards through time. Yeah. I don't get that. You don't have to get that. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. Like, does he see everything <laughs> backwards? No, like, he just knows what the future is because he lived through it. But, like, how does he live backwards while we move forward? Like, he was, so he was a baby in 2000. Yeah, I get that. And then he was one in 1999. <laughs> yeah. But, like, how does that magically happen? <laughs> That's what I'm trying to understand. He's a wizard. I don't <laughs> I don't know. Some things were magical. Like the... Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I really, when I watched it on Tuesday before watching yeah. it with you today, when Wart was popping off to uh -huh. Sir Ector and was getting emotional, I was like, I feel this. Yeah. I feel really bad for him. I'm like, I feel like if maybe we had like had a little bit more of Wart and with Wart, yeah. of just him and not like a bunch of outside things going on, uh -huh. I probably would have like been able to cry. But I was just like, ooh, I feel this in my soul. Yeah. Poor wart, dude. The yeah. kid goes through it, and then he's crowned king of a country when he's 12. Yeah. Six swords out of ten, I guess, is our re-rating. Yeah. The original movie count number is... Somewhere on the screen. <laughs> if you want to keep up with what movie I'm watching <laughs> when, follow me on Instagram and Twitter. You can find out what movie I'm watching when. Nowhere, right? You don't want to follow you anywhere? Sweet pea treats? Sweet pea treats. It's fine. She makes cookies and cakes, but... Cookies. <laughs> Buy them. Etsy. Sweet pea treats. Change your life. Great. Until next time, comment, like, subscribe, but I don't know if you are, so you do you, and don't be Sir Kay about it, probably. Yeah. We did that last time, I think. I think so. <laughs> One day you'll have the boys. <laughs> <laughs> I love them. Vaccinate your children. Sorry. Okay, it doesn't yeah. cause autism. What? <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs>